Welcome back. We're going to be talking about multi-phase systems in this tutorial. Uh, let us start by a phase diagram. So here you have a pressure temperature diagram where you will have this solid phase, you will have the liquid phase, and you will have here the vapor phase and gas phase, right? And here you will have this line where it divides the solid from the vapor, and here you will have uh, the line where the solid and the liquid are separated and the vapor and the liquid are also separated by one line, right? And the point where the three of them, solid, liquid, and vapor coexist is called the triple point. Here you have the critical point, right? Which we have already talked about that. And it's the maximum state where liquid and vapor can coexist after that, we have a super critical fluid. And here you have a pressure uh, volume diagram, a PV diagram, where you have here the liquid region, you have here the vapor region, here you have the uh, above the critical temperature, the above the critical temperature, you have the gas region, and here is the critical point, right? Here, these lines are temperature, are constant temperature lines, and you have uh, the liquid vapor region, which is the saturation region. You have the saturated liquid line here. It is when liquid starts to change its phase. And you need to uh, understand that there is here a situation where liquid and vapor coexist until the last drop of liquid becomes a vapor. Here you have the saturated vapor line. And in this phase diagram, you have certain concepts. First, the vapor pressure. And the vapor pressure is the pressure at which the, the evaporation will start to, uh, will start, right? And you have to understand that at constant vapor pressure, you will have constant temperature. You also have what we call the superheated vapor, which is here the vapor region, the super uh, heated vapor region, and the degrees of superheat is the amount of degrees Celsius that you are going to be having this vapor uh, after the evaporation pressure, the evaporation temperature. So in any case, if you have a vapor water at 120 degrees Celsius, and you know that the evaporation temperature is 100 degrees Celsius, then you will have 20 degrees of superheat. The boiling point is uh, this point where, uh, of temperature where this evaporation will start to uh, happen. And if you come from liquid and then you reach the temperature or the boiling point, you can actually call this the bubble point because you are going to be seeing that a bubble starts to merge. But if you go from vapor and you start to decrease the temperature until you get to the condensation temperature, which is the same as the boiling point, you will start to see that this starts to get some dew, and this is going to be called the dew point. These are the same concepts, just with different names. In order to estimate the vapor pressure, you can have at a certain temperature, you can have the Clapeyron equation. This is a differential equation that depends on the latent heat of vaporization, uh, the absolute temperature and the specific molar volume of the gas and liquid. If you integrate this uh, situation, you can get to the classes Clapeyron equation, which once again, the lateral logarithm of the vapor pressure is going to be equal to, and you have a dependency on the latent heat of vaporization, you have the ideal gas constant, the temperature, which has to be absolute, and a constant of integration. Very common is Antoine equation. You are also looking for the vapor pressure at a certain temperature, and you have this vapor pressure is going to be given in millimeters of mercury, and the temperature is degrees Celsius, right? So the question is, uh, how do you get this vapor pressure at a certain temperature? And you know probably that the temperature uh, for water, 100 degrees Celsius corresponds to a vapor pressure of one atmosphere. Or in other words, if the pressure is one atmospheric pressure, you need to reach 100 degrees Celsius 
in order for the vaporization to start. And here A, B, and C are going to be constants in a table. Here you have this uh, table from Antoine, equation constants, where you can have for different compounds at a certain range, the values for A, B, and C. And then you just have to plug this in the formula. If you want the vapor pressure of acetaldehyde at 20 degrees Celsius, you read A, you plug it, you read B, and you read C, and then you just uh, state the temperature in degrees Celsius, and this will yield to a vapor pressure in millimeters of mercury. The Gibbs phase rule will state that the amount of degrees of freedom that you are going to set or the number of variables that you can independently specify, these being temperature, pressure, mole fractions, etc., is going to depend on the number of components in a system, plus two, minus the number of phases, minus the number of reactions. Let's say that you have a mixture of liquid and vapor for water and CO2. You have two components, water and CO2, plus two, minus two phases, liquid and vapor, minus zero, there are no chemical reactions, and this yields to two, which means that you need to provide two properties, pressure, temperature, or some fraction, and the rest will be given. If you have a mixture of liquid, solid, and vapor for water, you have one component, plus you have two, uh, plus two, minus three phases, minus zero, there is no, um, there is no reaction. This yields to zero, which means that you cannot specify any property. You, this is going to be fixed because there is only one triple point for water. And when you have a mixture of a components of uh, a mixture of any uh, components, let's say you have a mixture of water and air, very useful and very common. And there is one condensable component. Let's say uh, water is going to condense. Say it, it's easy to condensate. Air is not going to condensate. Then at the equilibrium, the partial pressure of this uh, component I, which in this case we're talking about water, uh, in the mixture is going to be equal to the pressure, the vapor pressure. So P is going to be, the partial pressure is going to be equal to uh, the vapor pressure. And this is going to be equal, remember, to the Y fraction, molar fraction times P. Or in other words, the molar fraction is going to be the partial pressure, which is the vapor pressure over the total pressure. So this is uh, some theory about the multi-phase systems. Thank you very much.